take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Hello and welcome to another episode of Southgate Real Talk. I am your host for this podcast, Robert Montalvo. Just want to start off again by saying thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening, for the downloads. Thank you for sharing and talking about it. Appreciate all the messages um, and questions that you sent in, good and bad. I do read them all. And um, today's episode, we're going to be talking about gentrification, uh, especially here in Southgate. Gentrification has a lot of different meanings to different people. But one thing that we all can agree on is that gentrification affects mostly Latino and African American communities, such as Southgate, Compton, Linwood. And we're seeing it happening right now. One of the first signs that, that we can see gentrification coming on, and before I, before I begin with this, I just want to uh, thank uh, our vice mayor here in Southgate, El Rios, who has actually been the only one to mention gentrification happening here in Southgate. And being in that political realm, it's really not talked about. And I am really glad that he did mention it a couple of times already. So he is really aware of it, and he's been pretty upfront about it. I'm gonna, and I'm paraphrasing here right now, but he said it's here, so we should deal with it. And I totally agree with that. So some of the first things that we can see that, that Southgate is being gentrified is affordability, like living affordability. What are the rents like? Now, if you can remember back in, like, maybe, let's just say 2016, an average one-bedroom rent was about $700. Fast forward four years from now, 2020, that same one-bedroom apartment is going for almost $1,200 right now to find a home here in Southgate at a price that you can afford. I was looking on Zillow and a couple of other sites just to get an idea. And you know, most like two, three bedroom homes are about a little over $500,000. And that's just the asking price. Uh, speaking to a couple of realtors that I know, uh, they often go for like 50, sometimes even 100,000 more than what they're asking for on that because of the demand for that. And as that demand grows, the pricing goes up and people that live in Southgate are priced out of not just a home, but even just paying, just getting a rental to live here. You know, the average medium income is, I believe it's like 44000 a year. And it's probably way less than that right now, especially with this pandemic going on. But the rents are not going down. They're staying the same. The homes are going up in price, which means people can't afford them. And that is a perfect recipe for gentrification. Uh, Southgate has over a 20% unemployment rate, over 60% housing liability right now. And those are really high numbers to be dealing with. If you're in those categories and you're not working and you're barely getting by right now, how are you going to survive with increasing rents? And this leads to a lot of other issues also, especially with this pandemic. So like A lot of people are not working. There was a $1,200 stimulus check, but how far did that go? The rent is not being forgiven. It's just being postponed. Let's just say somebody's barely getting by. They're paying $1,200 a month rent, and it's already been six months. You know, that's almost $8,000 right there. They can't get back. So when this moratorium is lifted already and they have to start paying rent, in addition to the rent that they have to pay the 1200 they have to pay that back rent now. You know, it's just going to be impossible for the majority of residents here in Southgate uh, to do that. It's a recipe for disaster and it plays into gentrification as a whole because it will give landlords an absolute option to start evicting people. Knowing that there is no rent control here in Southgate, 
they'll be more than willing to push that issue so they can start charging 18, 1900 for that same unit, just pushing up the rental prices around, pricing everybody out, and people that can't afford it will move in, and that's how gentrification starts taking taking form with with new people moving in from outside kind of changing the area little by little. And another thing we want to look out for with gentrification are words like revitalization, uh, Im improvements, restructuring, stuff that normally doesn't get paid attention to here in Southgate. A lot of people are usually working two jobs, some even three jobs. So there's very little time to pay attention to civics here in Southgate. And especially like um, some of these projects that are going on, like the the Tweedy the Tweedy Mile Revitalization Project, the Firestone Project. A lot of these projects are put into place because they want to turn it into something more viable to attract more businesses, which attract different people, not the people living here, not your neighbors, not friends that live here, but people that are going to pay more money which will price you out eventually. Like I said, if you're just barely getting by right now, if the rent goes up another two, three hundred dollars a month, you can't afford it, obviously. That moves you out of the place that you know you called home for the past ten years. There's one huge project that's coming down also, the um, LA River project, the river revitalization project. This project starting from the beginning uh, all the way up by Griffith Park, traveling all the way down to Lincoln Heights, uh, Frogtown, and it's going to end over in Long Beach. As they move along with that project in different phases, as those phases come down, the areas get gentrified. The property value increases. Just like um, an example would be the legacy apartments that, they're, that they want to develop uh, by Legacy High School by uh, Dell Street, I believe. So the developer came in and was asked, like, what's your projected rents? You know, they had a one bedroom going for, I think it was like 1,900, a two bedroom for like 2,200. I mean, who in Southgate can afford that for rent? Not very many people, right? But this is where the gentrification starts. Like, uh, if you ask Mayor, Mayor Davila, she'll say that they're mandated to create X amount of, uh, of living spaces, apartments, homes for people. But on the other hand, we don't have rent control. And they go by market rate, which is very, I mean, it's a joke really because they use uh, Los Angeles. They, they use other cities for market rate. So, you know, something that rent in Los Angeles and in Santa Monica is different than what rent would be in Southgate, obviously, but they still use that graph around, and they never give you a straight answer of what they're using to justify the market rate. You know, even with the HUD regulations for, like, low-income housing, they have a marker of, like, $94,000 as, as for low-income to qualify. Who in Southgate makes $94,000? Not very many people. I think there's about... Um, I think it's like 4% of the population in Southgate uh, that make uh, over 100000 a year. The way with those, with those numbers and those uh, qualifications, you know, they're, I, guess we're living, I guess we're all living in poverty over here in Southgate. But it's a reality, though. And these are just some of the things to look out for that are, that are already happening around you. We all see that already. So as this river project develops... Uh, home values go up, and eventually they're going to price you out. You're not going to be able to rent anywhere. You're not going to afford be able to afford the rent. And even if you can, you know, you, you wind up having the same problem where we have like two or three families living, you know, in one apartment, and that's a whole other issue. Also, now if you're a homeowner, you're not out of the woods either, because as these property values go up, so do your taxes a fixed income that can be a really big problem be an extra burden on you you didn't have to pay before also like a lot of the amenities food 
gross. I mean, just everything goes up all around you. So what you're used to paying right now will also go up in price because obviously with the rents that go up to live in for like apartments, so do the storefronts, so does the commercial property go up to rent. So as that rent goes up, they pass on to the to their to your customers obviously. So if you go to a store, he's paying ten thousand dollars a month for rent, obviously he's gonna push that down to the products or food or whatever he sells to you at retail. So that's where the pricing actually goes up also. So your cost of living goes up. These things play to what's called gentrification. Now the end game for this is to move the population out. So they want to get you out of Southgate or whatever city it is. If you're Latino, African American, non-white, you don't fit into this program. And that's where they call it this like racial discrimination also. Uh, that's where that category falls in because it, it always affects these ethnic groups. And definitely where we live at, majority is, is Hispanic and, or I should say Latino and African American. And we're the ones that are targeted for it. Saying about, about if you're a homeowner, also there's a thing called eminent domain. It's not normally used, but it's a tool that they use that's at their disposal if you don't want to get out and they want to buy your home or it's designated to build a school in or, or whatever they, they want to to use just to get that. We look all around town to all the things that are being developed like like we're talking about the Tweety Mile um, revitalization project, the Firestone project. See it's being developed and mimicking kind of like the west side if you look at the way the islands are on the streets, the architecture of the buildings, it looks almost exactly like things you'll find in Santa Monica, in Venice, even parts of Inglewood, because it's the same, the same plan that they're using, same contractors, same developers. And again, this is all designed to get you out of the area call them um, gentrifiers they call them colonizers but at the end of the day you're the one that's in danger of, of being basically kicked out or forced out of a place you've called home all your life and a lot of moving parts with gentrification we're talking about words like revitalization so just pay attention to some things like that because as you're traveling around town or even going to some of the neighboring cities You'll see these projects coming up. It may not make sense at the time. And they count on this, by the way. They count on you not saying anything. But pay attention to it. I mean, look at it. Ask questions. Because these are being put there for a reason. It's not good for you. The thing we want to look for is like a transportation hub. Like the one that they're, they're going to be developing by the river. This transportation hub... It's almost like a death mark if you live here right now and, you can't, and you're not able to afford the rents that are going to be coming up. Because what this is going to be doing is it's going to be giving people access, like transportation access, to Southgate, all the way down to Long Beach, down to L.A. So they can live out here in Southgate in these new buildings that they're developing at... 100, 2100 for one bedroom because they can afford it because obviously they work in another area. And where does that leave you? We're going to leave you homeless if you think about it. Because where are you going to go? I mean, you can't go south because it's just an exp at, at, right after you hit Long Beach. I mean, you're talking rents are like already at 2000 a month for a one bedroom. You know, homes are already like six, seven hundred thousand. You know, you go to Lakewood, these other areas, same thing. You're definitely not going to go west because you're talking about eight. This is basic. We're not going west because that's just like totally ridiculous pricing. You know, you're, you're talking like sometimes three to four thousand dollars a month rent um, for that. 
So you're going to go east, right? We're going to go to uh, Riverside or we're going to go to Fontana. Well, you know what? The pricing's about the same as it is right now in Southgate, believe it or not. Trapped. Trapped with nowhere to go. I guess the next stop where they're going to send you is probably Nevada or Arizona because we just can't afford to live here. I mean, you can go further up uh, up north, Bakersfield maybe, Cisco definitely, but, you know, where are you going to go? If you sell your house, where are you going to go? Price is the same. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a trap. Uh, this gentrification is definitely happening. It's here. And you, everybody listening should be aware of this. Biggest impact that gentrification has is obviously displacement. And displacement's a big thing because like I just talked about right now, where are you going to go? I mean, everything is so expensive. And eventually they're, they're going to run out of room to go. So not only does it, it, it hurt you financially, but it destroys family. It destroys a whole culture in some areas. Like we've had generations of, of Latinos living in Southgate, generations of African Americans living around. And that's all gone once this thing comes in because obviously, poor area, our incomes are not there, but the developers come in and again, no rent control. There's no protections for you. Even owning your home doesn't save you from, from this happening. And it's a sad thing also. I have people that say um, that are pro-gentrification They'll say the crime rate goes down. They'll say it's a beautiful place. It makes the place beautiful to live. And basically, if you can't afford it, then you, you, know, you shouldn't live here. But then we got to ask ourselves, you know, how do we get to the point we're at right now? Like in Southgate right now, there's a lot of crime going on. There's no question about that. And why is there so much crime? to ask ourselves these things. I mean, obviously there was a lot of propositions passed. Um, the jails, um, they're not taking in as many, any prisoners for jails. Also a lot of crime. It's been, it's, it's even been before these propositions. Why is there no community centers? Why are there no resources for our youth? This is all by design. The education that we're talking about right now already started over a decade ago slowly progressing right under our noses. Why are our schools 10% every year, performance-wise? I shouldn't say all schools. Bryson is, is, is probably the best school we have in Southgate. But the rest are, you know, they rank 3 out of 10, 2 out of 10. You know, why is that? That's by design. Because if you have uneducated people those people are going to be doing remedial jobs when they grow up chances are they're not going to go to college and then they're going to revert back to the cycle their parents were in which most of the time are either no education or very little education so they go back to remedial, remedial jobs tell stuff like that and there's nothing wrong with that those kind of jobs but it just creates a cycle and help this gentrification along. There's a reason why a lot of resources are not put into our cities. It's because it's part of a master plan. So they want to hold you down, not give you the best education, not give your kids the best education, put the resources out of reach for you. The way the majority of people do not prosper. You're not getting the best education. You don't have access to these resources. There's no programs for our youth. Therefore, they turn to gangs. They turn to drugs. They turn to crime. This is all by design. This is part of the gentrification process. We see it every day. I mean, if you really, really think about it, you can see it for yourself. I mean, how many youth programs do we have for our kids that are free, that they can go to without paying a dime. 
almost none. Actually, I can't even think of any that we do have right now. Where can they go free time? There's really nothing. I mean, now if we go to like uh, Santa Monica, we go to uh, Palisades, we go to some more affluent areas, there's plenty of free resources for youth. So why is that? You know, it's only obvious because they want the youth to grow up and get into trouble because they know when they have nothing to do, they're going to join a gang. They're going to, they're just, because when they don't have anything to do to occupy their time, no mentorship programs, nothing to hold on to, they're going to get into trouble. Educational resources are not there also. They're not able to be successful and getting higher education. I believe in the more affluent areas, there's tutoring available, and the access to the latest learning equipment, programs, you name it. Something we don't have here in Southgate, let alone the Southeast. It's all by design, and this is why they keep everything under cover, do it really slowly. And then right when you realize it, like we're out right now, you're like, hey, wait a minute. Why are all these developments coming around all of a sudden? Why is the rent so much right now? Right now we're at a tipping point with this pandemic. This COVID has just created a, it's like a, a gift to them because it's allowing them to progress faster and again, because of the rents, once the moratoriums are lifted, people are going to start getting evicted. There's no question about that. Zero in my mind that people are going to start getting evicted. And that's how it's all going to start. When, when they get evicted out of that apartment, they're paying $1,200 for a month. If they're out, you better believe it's going to be $1,900 for the next tenant that comes in there. And so on and so on. This gentrification works. All this development, all these changes, all these great things that people are telling you, the revitalization, all this stuff, it's not for you. It has never been intended for you, for me, for any one of us. This is for the new people that they're gonna be that are gonna be moving into Southgate. Why everything is Welcome back. Uh, we'll continue talking about gentrification. Uh, what I'm going to focus on right now are things that we can do, what you can do as a community to help slow down and maybe even prevent this from happening to us. Uh, the first thing is really important. The first step we need to do is get to know your neighbors. Talk to everybody on your block. If you live in a, apartments, you know, just go around talking to them about it, chances are you're going to be surprised that what you talk to them about with gentrification, they'll know it also. They may not understand it fully, but they'll be more receptive to you because they see it also. And you can be just that light for them to help them understand what's going on. Once we organize as a community, we will dictate what happens in this community. Believe it or not, there is strength in numbers. Another thing would be to focus on these school districts and anything our children, any resources we have, we need to start holding people in power accountable. Example would be like the schools. I mentioned earlier, like some of the schools were like two out of 10 on the rating system. We got to step up and, and make sure they know this is not acceptable. We should have the best teachers, the best system in our schools. Here in Southgate, we should demand that. Our kids are worth it. That's some of the things that you can do by completing our first step, which is getting to know your neighbors and talking about it and holding people accountable for bringing the resources that, honestly, that we all pay for. And I think your kids, I think my kids deserve the best education possible. And settling for mediocre education 
is not part of the plan for me. So that is one thing we can do is hold them accountable. Make sure we are getting maximum effort from those resources we do have and we pay for. The school is, schools are at absolutely at the top of my list because the schools that we do have are really unacceptable. I don't know if you've, anybody has been to Southgate High lately, but it's not in the best condition, I'll say. It could be better for the amount of money that, that, that's put into it. And that's something that we should demand. Not just as parents, but as a community, because this affects everything. If our kids have a structured, up-to-date learning facility, they're going to do better. If they have motivated teachers that really care, not to say that they don't already, but we all know that there's some out there that don't, especially the ones that come to our schools. Otherwise, why do we have schools that are 2 out of 10, right, on performance? Because the kids obviously aren't learning right. We have to hold people accountable. Another thing that we need to do to stop this gentrification is demand affordable housing. And when I say demand, I mean showing up to city council meetings, showing up to their houses, calling them, emailing them, telling them exactly what we need. And that's affordable housing. That's rent control. That's low-income housing. And not to mention also programs to help our seniors, first-time home buyers, and on the seniors that are already in homes, have their homes paid off, but are on fixed incomes. You know, just because a house is paid off, a lot of them struggle. A lot of our seniors struggle. And it shouldn't be that way with the amount of resources that we do have. And they're going to keep on going the same way they have been for for years because we don't say anything you just everybody just falls in line we need to get involved and if you can't I'm always here to help you so that's one thing we should be demanding from every one of these people on city council I I attend call in to city council meetings all the time but we need to come together as a community and demand this not just for ourselves but for everybody as a whole to protect our community, to protect our kids, to protect our elders, our seniors. Because I personally, I love Southgate. I love living here. I think it's a great city. But we do have our problems in here. And one of them is the lack of compassion for housing here. The biggest thing I can say is rent control and programs to help our seniors and first-time home buyers. We do have some programs for first-time homebuyers right now, but nothing compared to what more affluent areas have. And you know what? That's not fair. And you know why it happens? Because we don't say nothing. We need to stand up and demand these things. And it will happen. It won't, it won't be easy. It won't happen overnight. But if we organize, we get together, we write, we call in, and tell them what we want. People would not have to be worrying about outrageous rents. And that's by design because they are working with the people, the developers, to develop this land. I mean, I hate to say this, but some people on that city council really don't care about you. Because obviously they're, they're not going to do what's best for you. Otherwise, we would have rent control already. All they care about you is when it's time to vote and they tell you, um, <laughs> they tell you everything that's good about them and then they disappear. But those things are, would be a good start here in Southgate to do. So if, if you're motivated, if you're a motivated person, you know a lot of people, like I said, talk to your neighbors. It all starts with a few, and that few turn into many. And you know what? Quite frankly, if these city officials, these elected officials, don't want to listen to us or listen to you or listen to what you say, but doing these small steps right now will help prevent this gentrification from happening, then we always have an option to find somebody that will. That's the beauty of our democracy. But luckily, I, I want to believe that they will listen to, to people when they, when they ask about rent control. And, not to hear to, and we're not here to have, hear their excuses why we don't have it. We're asking for it right now. If you're a renter, you better believe you're going to need it. Even if you have Section 8, that's another thing that, they, that I didn't touch on. For some reason, Section 8 disappears when when an area is being gentrified. 
they move it to another area. So let's just say you're on a Section 8 property here in, in Southgate. All of a sudden, something's going to come up where there's no housing, but all of a sudden, oh, if, do you want, they're going to ask you, do you want to move to another area? Obviously, you're not going to want to, but then they're, they're not going to cover because the owner of that property no longer wants to do Section 8. And lo and behold, you're going to be out of a home. So this is all done by design. So just to recap, gentrification is bad for you. The whole concept is bad for you. It affects mostly Latinos, African Americans, non-whites. But the majority are in the, those first two groups, Latinos and African American communities. We are the number one target for gentrification. And we know it's happening. We see it. So pay attention to these projects that are going on. And again, this is really important. Talk to your neighbors. Get to know everybody around you. And talk about what's happening. I mean, you can get on your phone. You can look it up online. Go on your iPad. Any device you have. And you'll find what I'm telling you right here is true about gentrification. Especially if you're a renter. You're the number one target you're going to suffer the most when it comes to gentrification because you're going to be priced out. You won't have any place to live. And there's a chance you're going to be homeless because of all the skyrocketing rents around. And it's a sad reality for a lot of people. We just have to remember to stick together and demand from these elected officials what we want and need. And if they don't listen, then we find somebody who will. It's just pretty much simple as that. It sounds pretty cutthroat, but you know what? They're playing cutthroat with you. They don't care about your living. They don't care about your future. They don't care about your kids. They don't care about your grandparents. They don't care about anybody except making money and redeveloping this this area to bring more affluent, more quote-unquote richer people in. We're not part of the equation for them. None of this stuff that's being done, revitalized, these new projects is for you. I can promise you that. We'll be right back. Well, that's it for another episode of Southgate Real Talk. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for talking about it. Like I said, I really appreciate it. Uh, without you, I don't do this. And vice versa so i i really count on you talking about it and and sharing it and i'm glad you enjoy the episodes um i see the emails and messages and i really do appreciate it and i'll keep doing it as long as uh everyone's listening so i'll see you on the next uh, episode thanks god bless